Hello and welcome to Photoshop Pro. In today's tutorial we'll be going over the exposure fusion process in creating an HDR image. Um, first thing you notice is we have a lot of different methods we can use but I always and only use highlights and shadows adjust and the reason is because I have almost nothing to do in all the rest of them. In average I've got no options available it makes an automatic adjustment. Highlights and shadows auto, no adjustments I can make, it automatically gets done. Highlights and shadows two images, the best I can do is choose two of my images and they will make an automatic adjustment again. And in intensive, well I get, I do get a little bit of control but I only get three sliders to work with. Not quite good enough. So I want to go back to highlights and shadows adjust, I'll get seven sliders to work with. I've kept the histogram panel open uh, because I want to see a little bit in better detail what's happening with the luminance of my image. Uh, the processed image right here is very dark and I've lost almost total detail in the shadows and that's going to be the big task. And I've lost almost total detail in this really abstract and bizarre painting on the back wall. It's a painting of a sky with like a dragon and, and some demons and it looks, something that looks like an octopus and, and a green kind of ghost spirit thing flying in the sky. It's really cool and very bizarre and I want to bring out those details. Let's look at the blending point slider first. This one will control uh, which one of your images is going to play the strongest part in the overall image. If I drag this all the way up to the right what's going to happen is the overexposed images will play a stronger part. The overexposed images, I'm going to open up the shadow details a little bit more. Likewise, if I drag it to the left, uh, it's going to get darker, and the underexposed images are going to play a stronger role. The task on this picture is to lighten it up a lot more, so I'm going to bring blending point all the way up. You can see the histogram shifted nicely to the right. Now, why didn't I choose shadows? Because this is that slider is supposed to open up the shadows. So I'll bring my blending point back to the default position. And now check out the histogram as I move shadows all the way up. It does shift, but not nearly as much as if I really strongly bring out the shadows with the blending point. Another little trick to play is pull your shadows back to the default of zero, move the blending point all the way up, brightens, shifts nicer. Now what happens if I want to apply both of them, open up the shadows and do it with the blending point? Well it shifted again, but almost nothing. The shadow slider played a tiny, tiny little role in brightening up uh, the shadow details. go ahead and just leave that off actually. Um, okay, accentuation. This is going to work on the contrast and when you play around with your contrast it does brighten or darken your image. If I pull the accentuation all the way up, check the histogram. If I pull it all the way down, check the histogram. It gets a little bit lighter, doesn't it? And it gets a little bit darker when I pull it up to the right. And I don't want that so I want to pull this down, make the image a little bit brighter. I'm getting a, a, a little bit better on the gold leaf foil on this urn that, that, that holds the incense and the candles. Color saturation is pretty straightforward. Drag it to the right to saturate your colors more. Totally horrible and radioactive. Bring it all the way down to create a grayscale image. I'm going to pull it up a little bit to the right of the default of zero, make the colors a little bit more saturated. Now here's another way I can work on the brightness of the image. Uh, white clip and black clip, here's where the histogram comes in uh, uh, even, even to be more useful. If I drag the white clip up, now watch the pixels on the, on the brightest uh, part of my image, those are the pixels on the right. If I pull the white clip all the way up, you can see the image brightens up significantly. 
Um, but what I'm probably doing is losing details in the brightest. I'm losing the brightest of the bright pixels. Uh, I'm starting to lose detail. Let's uh, click on the loop. I think this is probably about the brightest part of the image. And then what I'm going to do is pull, now check out in here, this is just flat, completely blown out white. If I pull the white clip all the way down now, let's see what happens in this area. You get a little bit more detail, but not a lot. So this was pretty blown out to start with. Um, so what I'm going to do is not care. It does shift to the right, but not a tremendous amount. And when it does that, I make it a little bit brighter. I'm getting a little bit more detail here. The black clip is equally as dangerous. Check a look at, take a look at the, the pixels on the darkest side of the photo here. If I bring that all the way up, I've just lost a lot. I've lost a lot. It's darkened up the image. The dark, the darkest parts of the photo have been pushed off the histogram and sort of no longer exist in a black hole of flat black nothing detail. So check out your histogram when you use the white clip and the black clip. You don't want to be losing, losing pixels there. That's a little bit better. I like that. Now, another way to work on the brightness of the image is going to be the mid-tones adjust. This is going to be contrast also. White clip and black clip and mid-tones, they all work on the contrast. But, uh, as I said before, when you adjust the contrast, you also adjust the brightness. So, I'm going to reduce the contrast by doing this, but I am going to make the image brighter. That's way too bright, and you can see it, it's pushed these bright guys off the chart, huh? Regardless, uh, I'm going to check out my histogram and I am going to pull the white clip up a little bit to get a little bit better brightening of the image. Even that might be a little bit too much there. The heck, believe it. My midtones, that's what I'm doing. The midtones are pull it down a little bit. That's a little bit better. I'm brightening up the image on the right side here. On the left side, I'm gonna darken it up, hey? Eh? I'm gonna increase the contrast, but increasing the contrast to watch the histogram is gonna make it darker, and in this case way too dark. So if I go back to the default of zero, let's start all over again. I know now I want to come up to the right to brighten it a little bit, so let me drag it up a couple of values roughly. And that's not bad. Maybe even half of one more, roughly. That's pretty good. Okay, I think I'm pretty much done here. I might want to go back and finally play with the accentuation. This is another contrast guy and that'll make it a little bit darker, but it will increase the contrast, okay? So I like having the contrast in there, especially in the, uh, the gold leaf foil area, which is better seen in the full 100% image. And if I pull my accentuation all the way down, going to be losing, it's going to brighten it up again, but I'm losing a little bit of contrast there, aren't I? And I like the kind of folds of the gold leaf. It'll make it a little bit darker, but that's okay. I'm getting more contrast in the gold leaf, which is a highly detailed area of the picture. And I've brightened it up overall by working on the blending point. The shadows, forget it. The blending point's all the way up. And my white clip, do I want to go back and play with this a little bit more? If I bring that up to about five, I'm going to kill it, aren't I? No, that's not bad. I'm checking my histogram here. I'm losing on the high side, which is right here, but I don't care. I don't care about that spot. I can always go back and do a little post-processing in Photoshop and bring back any detail that I happen to have there. I kind of like it. I'm going to leave it there. Exposure Fusion, thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.